Hello, and in this video I'm going to talk about two different types of events that tend to give some students a bit of confusion in between distinguishing between the two. And that's a mutually exclusive events and independent events. So let me first define what they mean. So a mutually exclusive event, a mutually exclusive, exclusive, which I sometimes may abbreviate as just ME, pair of events, are events that cannot occur simultaneously and an independent pair of events are events that do not affect the outcome of the other. All right, so let us start with an example to sort of demonstrate the difference between these two. So example, let event one, or let us assume we flip one coin. So that means heads or tails, or two coins. Heads or tails. And let E1 represent the event that both coins are heads. And let event 2 represent the event that both coins are tails. So assume E1 occurs. So that means if E1 has already occurred, then that means we have heads on the first coin and heads on the second. So is it possible that E2 can also occur simultaneously with it? Well, if both are already heads, unless we flip them or flip them upside down, it's impossible for it to be both heads and tails. So if this is true, then that means both cannot be tails. And even if I define another event, say E3, such that at least one is a tail, that can't be true either. So both cannot be t tails simultaneously. Therefore what? Therefore E2 cannot occur. That means E1 and E2 are mutually exclusive, or ME. So example two. Suppose we flip two coins again, uh, but I'm going to define E1 to be equal to you get a heads on the first and let E2 represent the condition where you get a tails on the second. So assume that E1 occurs. So coin one is going to be a heads. Is it possible that we can get a tails on the second? Yes, it is. So this is possible to occur simultaneously. And we can switch the order. We can start with E2 and, of course, see that E1 can happen simultaneously as well. 
So that means what? That means E1 and E2 are not mutually exclusive. So if E1 occurred, so that means we have heads on the first, is it possible to get A heads on the second? Of course it is. So it's definitely possible that we can have heads on the first and heads on the second. That is, whatever we get on the first one does not dictate the outcome of the other. Therefore, the result of E1 and the result of E2 have no effect on the other. Therefore, E1 and E2 are also independent events. Let us consider a different scenario. Let E1 represent the event of rolling a die and getting a 6. And let E2 represent the event of rolling the same die and getting an odd number. All right, so rolling a die and getting a 6. So that means we've already rolled a die, and we have this as our first uh, outcome. So this is already, let us assume this has already occurred. So this is E1. So let us assume we roll a die and get an even number, or an odd number, sorry. So E2 can either have this, it can have this, or it can have this. So can these two events happen simultaneously? The answer is no. They cannot occur simultaneously. Therefore, they are they are actually exclusive. Now, are these events independent or dependent? Well, they are the same exact die that are in question here. So if we get a 6 on the die, can we also get an odd? The answer is no. Therefore, the likelihood of getting an odd depends on the value for which that we actually got. So that means this is dependent. More in particular, if event 1 gave us a 6, that means the likelihood of it being odd is 0 or impossible. There's more to be said about these things, um, but we'll revisit this idea of mutual exclusiveness and independence once we have some mathematical notation behind it. But overall, these two concepts are disjoint. So usually mutually exclusive events usually can be demonstrated with a Venn diagram. Usually you have an E1 here, and usually you have an E2 here. Uh, but independence has nothing to do with it. So mutual exclusive can happen simultaneously. But independence doesn't affect the outcome of the other.
another example of independent events, uh, let E1 be the event that it's raining outside. And let 2 represent the event that, um, let's see, another event that, I don't know, some people can discuss these things in more detail, that, you know, my dog is happy. Or hungry, rather. Uh, because whether it's raining outside or not, my dog is going to be hungry or not, depending on its own self, you know. Uh, interest. Now, one may argue that, okay, maybe my dog eats more when it's raining outside. Well, if that's the case, then that means these events are dependent. Um, but that's a discussion for another time. Uh, but at least this lays down the definitions and some basic understanding of the difference and similarities between mutual exclusive events and independent events.